Hello. Hello. In there. Rats. What's going on, folks? Welcome to another edition of Let's and Teleplay. I'm your host, Josh. Uh, for anyone watching, if you hate doing your own taxes, the AARP has a tax service at libraries that's free. Oh, that's legit. Very cool. I did not know that. Oh, it's another day. I am a little under the weather, but I am trying to be better about keeping to my commitments. So today, we are doing our first stream of 2020. Clear vision for the new year. I'm your host, Josh, the founder of Intelligame.us, a game culture criticism site where we find intersections between games and the world around us and occasionally forget to adjust our cameras. Anyway, um, it's good to see you folks. It's good to be back. Uh, you can see I have not totally cleaned up the office. I should have, you know, let's say it's a new year and you want to come in and have all the stuff super perfect. Um, I didn't do that. I, <laughs> I actually... Um, I've been traveling a bunch, just got back a few days ago. Um, if you are a subscriber or if you're a uh, patron, uh, you got the update earlier this week. It talked a little bit about where I've been. Um, so I uh, got back to Portland and promptly fell ill. <laughs> so yesterday for New Year's, I was sitting at home and uh, nice. <laughs> Thank you for those bits. Damn it, Chris. Happy New Year's to you, too. Um, yeah, I promptly uh, came home and basically have just sat here drinking um, massive amounts of tea. And I always, like, forget to eat enough when I'm sick. I just don't get that hungry, but I know that I need to be sleeping and I need to be eating more. So uh, I'm trying to do some of those things. But for at least the next couple of hours, I'm going to be hanging out with you folks. Um... I don't know how how was your how were your New Year's? It's good to see, uh, it's good to see you, and especially on New Year's Day, where I know a number of folks um, we spending time with loved ones or recovering from spending time with loved ones. <laughs> uh, it's nice to be able to uh, it's nice to be able to at least hang out digitally. Uh, I actually was I was thinking about streaming last night, but I was just so the this cough that i i still have that is not great was worse yesterday um you may see me duck out from stream from time to time uh, to not cough disgustingly into the microphone but um but i think it like i said at least for the next couple hours we should be all right oh you got stuck at home uh did you did you have bad snow um i th i heard i think that Michigan had a bunch of uh, of weather as well. So, um, oh nope, just didn't have a car. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Well, I'm sorry you got stuck at home, but I hope uh, you were still having a good time. Um, it's good to see you, Jazz. Welcome to the stream, <laughs> and thanks. Uh, the the wallet thing's pretty frustrating, but um, so I uh, on. Uh, what was it? New Year's Eve Eve. So on Monday, um, I decided that I was going to try and stick to good habits, even though I was uh, falling a little bit ill. And I was like, no, I still need to go to the gym. And I went to the gym and I worked out for an hour and a half, something like that. And uh, when I returned to my locker, I found that the lock had been... Uh, broken apparently there were some people who saw them on the way out saw that they had a pair of like wrenches and they must have done something to physically pry the uh pry the lock off so it was like broken on on one side and uh they took my wallet they did leave my hoodie uh which i kind of appreciate because it's my favorite hoodie um or one of my favorite hoodies it's my any key hoodie but um yeah, so uh, I had, uh, and, and before I before I do any details, I should say like financially I'm okay. 
Um, I was able to get all my cards locked. Um, it was after they had already stolen the money, but I got fraud, uh, fraud reports already filed, filed a police report. Um, they've issued me new cards. They're all on the way and hopefully should be here by the weekend. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for the, uh, I got an emote thanks to your cheer. Well, uh, thank you for the haha -ha ginger cat. <laughs> um, and thank you uh, for those bits, Chris. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I filed a police report. I've got, um, I, I've got enough in savings that while they're going through and researching the fraud reports, I'll still be able to, um, you know, do any of the stuff that I need to do for work uh, or for just personal stuff. I've got enough credit open on my credit card that I'll be able to to write it out. So, so before uh you know um so thank you for that and i um a lot of people have been concerned and want to know how they can help and i'm and i'm really doing okay um i'm just i'm frustrated um and i i don't know a whole lot of like what to do about that aside from just deal with it i guess um I've been thinking about getting those tile fit. Yeah, I, I've thought about that. Now, I know tile, um, for folks who don't know, tile is like, it's this little, um, it's like a one inch by one inch sized piece of plastic and you can put it on your keys or um, put it in your wallet. And if you've lost it, it'll, you know, beep at you. I don't know if it'll do, I don't know if it does like GPS. Um, so I don't know if it would still work if I had like, gone to look for it but i do know that um they um i did know where they did the transactions so really if i had been um if i had been thinking more clearly um i would have gone over to the place where i saw them withdrawing the money you know because i got the alerts on my on my phone um where i saw them afterwards i usually keep my phone on silent so um Anyway, so I would have gone and maybe checked and then, uh, you know, who knows, maybe they threw the wallet away after they got the money and maybe I still could have got, you know, kept my at least, you know, personal photos or business cards I had in there, or whatever. But um, alas, that's, I guess, how it works out sometimes. Um, I'm lucky that I'm in a position where, like I said, it doesn't put me in any sort of serious jeopardy to not have access. Um to those resources uh my landlord is super reasonable and uh you know will be willing to wait the few days until my new card comes in so yeah um you know i'm not you know i'm i'm less mad more disappointed but i also like i said i, I um and i said this a bit on stream like i hope the folks who took it really needed it <laughs> you know um I don't know their backstory. I don't know that it would make me feel any better to for them to like serve jail time. Um, I don't know their stories or their history or whatever, but um, they did like steal my Christmas cash. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, uh, it just, stuff like that is really depressing. So, oh well. Anyway, uh, what's up, Sean? It's good to see you. Uh, welcome back and congratulations on the new job. Um, totally understand if you dip out to start The Witcher. I've heard really good things about it. I watched The Mandalorian last night and uh, really loved it by the time I got to the end of it. Uh, and Gina Carano, um, one day when you when you watch this VOD, because obviously you you will be directed here, know that you have a special place in my heart. Um, Holy hell, is she fantastic. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, this is first stream of 2020, and uh, we're going to be playing Sayonara Wild Hearts. Um, hey, what's up, Snowbound? It is good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, yeah election year. It is uh, very much game time. Yeah, that is a. I didn't realize that's a long. 
election year. Nothing else matters. That is a long uh, alert. You know, um, I, I will say that, like, yeah, it's an election year. It, it Or it is. And, you know, it's uh, for us here in the States in particular, uh, for it being an election year, this is... This is go time, you know, um, this is going to be when it's going to be really important to kind of do what we can to make positive change in the world and and find ways to reach out to others. Um, but I will say that I also do think that um, though this is not the time to lose focus, I think this is an important time to remember that there are other things that matter. Um, you know, our family, our health. Uh, this is not to say that like, oh yeah, don't don't worry about the election because we still got a family. Like because things can go tragically wrong. The uh, the concept of American exceptionalism has I think kept us uh, sort of mentally isolated from the from the idea that something can happen here. Uh, but I don't think that that is true. Um, I, th I think that things can happen here, and so uh, it is important for us to remain uh, to to remain focused on doing good and remembering those things that do matter that are not just whatever the noise that's going to show up over the next year for this election season is going to be. Um, I have been trying to pay more attention to how much information I'm taking in and where I'm taking that information in from. Uh, being on Twitter, being on Facebook, being on Instagram, um, I can lose time and not just time, but productivity because, you know, I get sucked into whatever the, the most recent drama is that I can't do anything about, never knew anything about. Um, and like, yeah, and, and there's, there is actual, there is tragic stuff going on that like we should know about that we don't know about. Um, you know, I've been seeing a lot of um, I've been seeing a lot about the fires in Australia, and those are I mean, it's just the photos are terrifying, you know, and it's it's summer in the uh, southern hemisphere. So like it's hot down there and there's it, that is worth knowing about like but the but we have to keep that perspective that it means that like taking action on climate change is important because like the, we're, we're seeing the the effects of what happens when we don't um, take care of the environment take care of our planet so yeah um, we gotta we gotta try and get things ready to to try and write what we can uh, for the next for the next uh, I mean I think that 2020 is a tipping point in that um, it gives us an opportunity to hopefully correct course correct some of the things that could go wrong in the next few years anyway it's good to see you too RJ snacks sorry <laughs> it's like I'm just uh, it's so um, it's a it's a lot to think about and I think uh, it's interesting that I, I feel like I saw no, like, remember in like 20, 2016 when everybody was like, man, fuck 2016, bring on 2017. And that was like all the memes. And then I think in 2018, there were like a decent number of memes that were like 2017 was trash. Bring in 2018, 2017. And, and like, I did not see any of those for 2020. Like, I, like I've heard some people who are excited about 2020 and feel like it's going to be a good year. Um, and that is good. I think it's important to maintain perspective and hope. But like the sort of mass sense of like, F last year, next year is going to be great. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I had a Kindle taken from the break room at work, and that's exactly how I felt. Uh, disappointment more than anger. Yeah, just like, yeah, it, it, and it's, I think it's very different. I have to admit that I think that part of the reason why I feel more disappointment than anger is because I'm also, because this theft did not, was was not one that affected my ability to lead my live my life, right? And there's a, a certain amount of privilege in that. So... You know, if I, you know, getting money stolen from me is, is like disappointing and frustrating, but like I have a job that 
pays me enough to be able to get that money back and take care of my bills. But like if I had gotten um, and, and perhaps the Kindle kind of runs into the same thing where it's like, OK, like you lost you lose a device, but you didn't lose like the time you've still got your you can still read your um, ebooks on another device. You could get another Kindle. So like it's frustrating, but it would be different than like when you get like a memory card stolen back in the day or if you lose your phone or something like that. And it's like the the irreplaceable parts of that are, are what stick out. And so um, I have to admit, I, again, I'm, I'm lucky in the sense that what was taken from me for the most part um, are things that can be replaced and are not putting me in, in imminent danger. But if, you know, let's say that I had like withdrawn cash to pay rent and like I was living paycheck to paycheck and then my cash was gone or my money order was gone or like whatever, like I could feel completely differently about this entire thing. So, um, yeah, I, I just kind of acknowledge that that's part of it. And I'm, I'm thankful that I have friends and family who like instantly reached out to try and help. Uh, but I'm, I'm not gonna let that shoot down my, uh, my, my thoughts about trying to make 2020 a better year. Um, uh, yeah, you can post a link, Jazz. Um, that's why I like animal rescue videos. They set up stressed, uh, that's resolved quickly and professionally. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I definitely want to see, uh, I want to see, uh, I want to see everybody figuring out how to get their stuff, you know, figuring out how to, how to make things better. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. It's a, uh, want to save some time. Oh, good. Sorry. That was loud. Sorry, friends. I didn't know. Watch to really. Wait, this says watch to ruin your day. Am I? Oh no, wait. How is this? I'm afraid, Jazz. I'm... Wait. What? I don't. How is that? Okay, well, I, I will look at it. I'll, 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 I'll have to take a look at it later. <laughs> um, that doesn't seem like much of a hack, like putting... Oh, okay. Wait. Crush a bag of your favorite chips. What is this a life hack for? That's it? Is that just a like a walking taco? Chips, eggs. What? A an egg in a bag? All right, I'm. All right, yep, I'm a. I'm a vote no. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, I'm a vote no on that one. <laughs> yeah, we are ready. Yeah, we're ready for 2019 to end. Yep, let's bring on 20. It's so weird watching some of those memes that are like, here's a great way to let. It's like those commercials that um remember those old Disarono commercials? They'd have the dude. And he's this this like built kind of built like uh, uh bartender dude and he'd be like today i'm going to show you how to make disarono and milk first you take disarono then you add milk there you have it disarono and milk like that was the whole freaking commercial and i'm like what did you t what did you tell me nothing at all also thank you for that host i'm sorry i should have called that out earlier anna it's good to see you welcome to the stream happy new year how are you doing um 2019 
2020 begins with my daughter saying, Google, turn on the TV. <laughs> yeah, we live in the future and the future's got problems. Uh, the future's going to be complicated, friends. But, um, but I do think that one fantastic way to start the year is with uh, this game that hon honestly is one of my um, one of my top games of the year, one of my top games of all time, really. Um, I, it just, I, 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 it came out in September, and I have wanted to stream it, and I have, uh, I have this other project that I want to do with this game because I think it's just so spectacular. But I, um, I'm, I'm still trying to, I'm trying to pace myself here. I got a lot of ideas, and I want them to happen. So. Um, so we are going to start today with Sayonara Wild Hearts, uh, it's a game by Sumogo and, uh, published by Annapurna Interactive, um, and you've I've heard me wax poetic nine million times about Annapurna, but, um, Sumogo is a, uh, traditionally a mobile developer. They worked on a couple of games, uh, that you might've heard of called, uh, Your Walk, Device 6. Um, I think they've worked on other titles too, but they're known for having a lot of style that they put into their games. And Sayonara Wild Hearts is a pretty interesting departure from what I think is their original aesthetic, but holy cow, um, it is this profound mix of, uh, of music video and video game. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think you'll enjoy it. So let me go ahead and cue this up real quick. Um, also, by the way, uh, we've been listening to the Chill Hop Year Mix um, every year. Chill Hop, uh, Chill Hop Essentials, which you've also heard me. There are like four things I like, and I just talk about those four things all the time. Um, but Chill Hop, uh, Chill Hop Music drops a, uh, they drop quarterly releases of their Chill Hop Essentials uh, seasonal packs. And then they do Chill Hop Year Mix at the end of the year where they do like a two and a half hour Chill Hop Mix that's just, oh, this, this mix is really good. I've been working with it today. Um, I actually completed creating my spreadsheet. Um, so all of my games uh, are on, oh no, stop. I didn't, I didn't ask for this. Oh no. Um, where's my phone? I got a, got a speaker that's playing music right now and I would like it to cease doing so. Stop. Thank you. Anyway. Ow. I don't. Friends, I don't know what's going on. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing well. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over to Sinar Wild Hearts. I think, aren't we? Uh, oh, I gotta restart the capture card real quick. There we go. Sinar Wild Hearts. This this freaking game. I I'm telling you is so good i was trying to play some tetris 99 earlier uh, a couple days ago it was not working out not getting them w's like i used to and listening to so much chill hop and lo-fi lately yeah i mean honestly it's it's my there it's my go-to genre um i think it's just a great way to um it's it's just quality music with a really good vibe um yeah, it, I I spend tons of time with it and synthwave actually. Not I also long enjoy synthwave. Ago, in a town much like yours, there was a young right, woman who was started. very happy. Until one day, her heart broke so violently that her sorrow echoed through space and time. So our saga begins tonight, yet eons ago, just here. Yet light years away. Hey, what's up, Wiz? It's good to see you. Also, Kenna, this game is exceptionally pretty. <laughs> Everything about this game is exceptional. Mm. 
the soundtrack in a, like ugh. uh let me know how the sound levels are by the way if i need to uh pull anything down hey what's up initiative it's good to see you welcome to the stream um, also, if I need to, uh, I, I would say if you are having trouble hearing the music, you should let me know and I will turn it off. The music is such a critical part of this game, um, and I just want to make sure that I, that is good. Um, my one complaint with this game is the readability of the heart locations is not always great. I will agree with that. Um, it can sometimes be difficult to... I, I have a way, I have a reason that I justify some of that, but we can talk about it in a bit. Um, so we are gonna go through this game in, um, so when you go through the game originally, the first time around, um, each stage is divided up here and you have to sort of enter into each stage individually. What we're going to do, since I've already played through it and beat it once, is we're gonna play it in, uh, album arcade mode. So this is basically gonna. Well, actually, you know what? I'm wrong. Um, let's do it in uh, in traditional mode because this will actually create um, an op a couple opportunities, some natural breakpoints for us to have discussions. Um, no, I think I, I think I'm wrong. I think I'm wrong. I think we want to go through and play it in album arcade mode. Um, and then we'll just pause it when we need a moment because there will be places where we'll want to stop and have a discussion. Um, and yes, this game is very much just amazing. Um, and I'm so close to a gold score on on Album Arcade and I just was just I was like one heart away at the end. It was heartbreaking. There's also Yellow Arcade where you only get one life to clear it, and I guess I'm surprised I even did. Um, changed my mind. We're gonna do it this way. Sound seems fine. Okay, good. How have you been, Initiative? Long ago, a harmonious universe existed beyond ours, and three divine arcana watched over it. But one night, a cursed arcana intersected the astral highways, and along with her star-crossed allies, they stole all harmony and hid it in their vile hearts. Oh, the Arcana are going to be exceptionally significant in this game. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Tarot, but um, but the, the cards are pretty fade, they created pretty important from the shards of a broken heart, and hoped that she would one day be strong enough to save their world. There are also a number of games that utilize the Fool as sort of the the introduction, the hero character. Um, in Tarot, traditionally, the Fool is a representative of a character that's about to embark on a journey um, that begins with some sort of naivety, or uh, naivete. Um, it's a pretty rough month. I'm sorry to hear that initiative. It's I know the holidays can be particularly difficult for many folks, but um, I don't know if it was anything in particular that happened to you. Um, you're welcome to talk about it if you like, but if not... Um, no, you got our support either way. So, um, the nature of Sayonara Wild Hearts, uh, the main gameplay is sort of like a, um, is a bit like an arcade game. So we're going to be going through and like, there's not necessarily a huge combat focus. It's more about rhythm and, uh, some like quick time style events as well. So you're trying to get a high score, but really it's just about sort of getting wrapped up in the world that the game provides. Let's see. There are also occasionally opportunities to get bonus points. Um, with, oh shoot, I always mess that one up. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to hear that initiative. That's a really rough way to try and spend time during the, particularly during the holidays. Uh, yeah, my, uh, my grandmother, um, or my dad's mother passed away, uh, in, th uh, during, like, Thanksgiving a couple of years back, and it's, it's a lot. 
Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm really sorry. That's a lot to have to handle. I hope, um, obviously, I don't know a lot about how you, you know, get along with the rest of your family, but I hope they've been able to, to provide some comfort for you as well. Um, all right, let's, um, let's go ahead and start with, uh, our first level here. Now, thematically, um, I do think that this game, uh, you see, you saw at the beginning that the narrative, you know, describes a sort of a, a woman who has been going through some serious heartbreak. Um, and I do think that as we go through, um, as we go through more of the game, you'll see that the, a lot of those themes are references to romance, um, and sort of a, a relationship gone, uh, gone awry but i do also think that like because there is a sort of way that the you know the experience of heartbreak can feel like a a, a loss or a passing there can be some ways that the uh, the themes in this game feel referential to dealing with death and grief so if that is going to be a theme that's kind of heavy or rough right now um, this might not be uh, the, the ideal stream just as a heads up but also i mean if this is you know a place that can give you some comfort or some peace please uh, please stick around now there are a lot of um there are a lot of ways that like the you know what i it just it doesn't feel good to have the brakes it doesn't <laughs> Um, Long ago, a harmonious I find it interesting that she wears a mask as a way to hide herself, even though over the course of the story, she obviously opens up. So, as we go back through this uh, this opening, we'll see that there, you know, there are these. Um, we have this this feeling of um, these three arcana that are basically like coming together to try and deal with pushing against uh, these these five sort of dark arcana or cursed arcana and i think that there are a lot of ways that we can see uh hey uh <laughs> thank you for that kenna thank you for uh gifting that sub to initiative and, uh, initiative enjoy your your badge the um but i think that one of the ways that the game kind of takes on this idea, right? Like, this could all essentially be sort of a dream, right? Because she's sleeping and then awoken uh, by this... I, I always refer to it as, like, this Navi spirit, because it reminds me of the, you know, hey, listen, you know, from uh, from Zelda. But it to me, it, you know, a big part of it is that, like, this is taking a situation that's familiar and then finding a sort of internal strength that may not have, you may not feel as present um, when you're going through that difficulty in the moment. So the, um, you know, after we've finished this sort of long venture into finally grasping this, uh, this spirit we've been chasing, I kind of feel like it's less of like donning a mask for anonymity and more about, you know, we're basically referencing a magical girl transformation, right? So this is about trying to, um, you know, become this sort of super heroic figure who has access to um, to powers that perhaps the original identity does not. And being able to deal with these, um, you know, with this pain, with the heartbreak that we go through over the course of the narrative, uh, perhaps, you know, these are the ways that we do in a lot of ways. We put on a mask or try to summon some sort of courage that we feel like we might not have ourselves to be able to get through, um, to be able to get through tough times. Yeah, this track has a Disney princess theme quality. I would love to, I would love to see her as a Disney princess. <laughs> um... So you can see that once you've unlocked album arcade mode, instead of having to go through and pick from song to song, um, I really think it's just a much smoother experience to go from level to level.
Um, and yes, this was, uh, hey, what's up, Pear? Welcome back. Um, this is the same team that did Device 6. I still haven't played through it, but I do, uh, I do own it on iOS. Or do I have it on Steam? I think I have it on, uh, on iOS. And uh, I actually also have a, I just got a cable so that I could stream, uh, iOS games and run them out to my, uh, HDMI, so hopefully we can check that out at some point, too. Oh, there it is. Okay. Gosh, okay, so this is our, our first, um, our first sort of like subspace passage, so this is going to transition us into our um, first real encounter with our first rival Arcana, the Devil. Um, and uh, each of these each of these transition spaces are um, labeled as heartbreak levels. So it's heartbreak one, heartbreak two, um, and I like to think of these as sort of opportunities to delve deeper into. Um, the heartbreak and pain. Uh, this first level takes place in Hate Hell Valley, and I don't think that that is uh, a coincidence. Uh, there's so much about this game that you can really dig into, I think, narratively speaking. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and like uh, get on our motorcycle, which we're going to have a lot of experience with over the course of uh, over the course of the game. I'm not sure if we'll actually clear the entire game on stream tonight, but uh, every time I play this game, I I want to just go through the whole thing. So don't be surprised if we run a little bit long. Uh, I'm also going to try and like, there are special bonus pickups that you can get. You'll see these like kind of big, more card looking uh, items instead of hearts. And those are worth bonus points. Uh, the perfectionist in me always wants to come through and try and maximize my score, but for the sake of being here on stream, I will uh, I will lower my perfectionist tendencies. Shoot. I can't believe I did that. Like, the second I said I'll lower my perfectionist tendencies, because usually what would happen there is that I would restart the entire thing, because uh, your score actually... Um, the number of points you're able to get changes based on how long you're able to like stay alive successfully. So, um, is there a plot or we're just seeing the arcade mode? So yeah, this is this is the game. We're just instead of seeing it level by level, are going to be catching it um, all in one big sequence, which I think is honestly the best way to um, to see the game. Oh, you see that there are uh, also some sort of quick time event style interactions and this is our first rival gang which i think channels a bit of feeling of like i don't know um what am i thinking the uh like happy days style of these you know jackets and whatnot And one of the things that, um, so the, uh, I got to actually hang out with Jenny, uh, with Kim Chica during TwitchCon, um, and we played through this together, and one of the things that she pointed out is that, um, a number of the ways that the motion, the, uh, the, like, motions and positions and whatnot are actually positions that, like, and ways that people would look like as, as actual dancers which Jenny knows because she has a dance background. So, um, and the, the narrative of this game is completely linear, which I think is so incredibly important to the message that it de uh, delivers. And this song in particular, I think is carries the most thematic content. Um, so I would try paying attention to the lyrics if possible. I try not to talk over it too much, uh, but we'll probably take a second to deconstruct some of it after the level's over here. I'm also struggling to not sing along because I adore this soundtrack. <laughs>
Um, I'm, I also <laughs> like uh, this song is actually really heavy for me, so I'm gonna try and be okay. <laughs> Why? God, how do I cry so many times after <laughs> playing this game? Ah, and it's just like so beautiful. Oh, I'm definitely not singing. <laughs> Especially with the sickness, absolutely not. But it's just, it, yeah. Find the soundtrack after after because this is a this is a game that like sinks in. It's like one of my goals to do a complete perfect run of this game at some point too. Hey, what's going on Wagner Pride? Yeah, I, I, this song in particular is just, anytime, so part of it is that it's like anytime I, I'm getting used to it, right? Cause I've played this a bunch of times, but Anytime that I like sit and process the way that I'm feeling emotionally with this title, it's just it's rough. I've never played uh, or is Weight of the World a song or a game? I, I'm not familiar. Um, we'll definitely hear like I have no idea what's going on. We'll talk about it in a minute. I also appreciate that the respawn time is super low, so even when you do make a mistake, it doesn't remove you too much from the, uh, from sort of like the experience of connecting to the music. And you also see some places where you're, uh, you see that there are like the hearts on the ground that were supposed to do a little bit of guiding where to navigate, but I'm still a little rusty, I haven't played in a while. I always wanted to get 50. Josh, I don't like musicals. Also, Josh. Okay, so there are, there are a couple things that we should probably address here. First off, like, this is a little different from your typical musical because uh, the whole time that this is happening, like, we're actively processing plot. I'm also probably just, like, making excuses a little bit. Um, I don't know. I've got to figure out why my stream deck isn't changing scenes. Anyway... Um, yeah, Sayonara Speedrun incoming, 100%, and Weight of the World is from uh, Nier Autom Automata. I still need to play that. Llama actually gifted it to me on PC, and now I've got a rig that's good enough to play it. Um, so to go through a little bit of, like, what we just checked, um, and I, I would recommend, like, looking up some of the lyrics for some of these songs, uh, which was really hard to do when the game first came out. Um, I was kind of surprised that... Uh, they didn't go through and like make sure that the lyrics were up on like genius or something like that because they're really critical to processing the information of the game. This first track, Begin Again, um, you'll actually see the word, you'll hear the words Begin Again show up in a number of other vocal tracks throughout the game. But there's this progression that it makes lyrically where it goes from, um, where it goes from sort of this like, uh, how do you, how to describe, um, 
Also, hold on a second. Let me add, because I want us to have the audio for this playing in the background. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I want the video capture device. This one. There we go. So, um, lyrically, you know, this, the, the, um, you start off with hearing her say, like, I can still recall trudging through the cold December snow. Um, we didn't know that it would be the end, uh, that the, uh, saddest story ever told would unfold. So, you know, it's that sense of like, okay, like at one point in time, things were good. And we didn't know that like this relationship was going to at some point come to an end. And that's a theme that we'll see again, lyrically throughout what this game provides is that, um, you know, when you're in the depths of of like romance or the relationship or whatever, and it feels like everything is good until it's not. Um, and that's how, and it's not just with romantic relationships, with friendships, with loved ones, whatnot. Um, it's not until whatever that sort of singular tragic moment hits that all of a sudden everything changes. And it's like, we never imagined that it could be like this um, that this pain could hit the way that it does, uh, but when it happens, um, there's kind of no turning back from that. Um, this particular song, Begin Again, the first couple of verses really drive into this idea of, of trying to reach for fixing what we once had, to, to start the relationship over, to begin again, but... Um, the last phrase there's a there's a turn of just a couple of words um and it comes after what i think is really um a heavy lyric for me where um she says i, I can't stand one more of those calls where i talk and you say nothing at all um which i i think you know based on your own personal experience can be referential to a number of things but uh I don't know if you've had one of those relationships where it's like you're sitting on the phone trying to figure out how to fix it uh, or how to, you know, end it or whatever. And like, you're just sitting here like, please help me. Give me something. Tell me what it is you need, what you want. How can we assemble this? What is it? And then you just feel like you're a pest or something because you're like calling time and again. Like, we need to figure this out. And why do you not care about approaching this the same way I do. Um, so she says, you know, I can't stand one more of those calls where I talk and you say nothing at all. And the chorus then transitions uh, to it's time to forget all the pain and regret. It's the last time tonight. Um, you'll see or you'll hear over a course of the, the lyrics that um, like you had asked, you know, is this is the narrative of this game linear? Um, there is no avoiding heartbreak. And I think that this game's narrative being linear is critical to processing that. If there were an ability to like get a perfect score to uh, like unlock a secret ending or something, it would really undercut the idea um, that going through heartbreak is is a process. Um, and that there's no there are no shortcuts in it there and there are so many frequent times that like, we can't fix it as much as we want to. Uh, it just is the way that it is. Actually, there's a our, our first uh, Intelligame YouTube video. If I could get, um, I don't know. I don't think I have any mods in the chat. If somebody could go to the uh, the Intelligame YouTube page, um, our first IGTV video is about a game called Florence, which is also an, a linear narrative uh, game that is phenomenal but it also talks about um the importance of linear narrative and the ways uh that having a linear narrative can underscore a, a sort of uh, particularly constant theme so uh somebody could link to that i'd really appreciate it but um so yeah uh as we go through and proceed through the rest of the game you'll see that these these ideas of the inevitability of heartbreak and respecting the pain of heartbreak, but also respecting the ability to move on, uh, is is huge. So, let's uh, let's head on to the next level. Uh, and I'm gonna actually remember to transition us back to our scene so that you can see the game.
All right, so we took out our first arcana, and now we are going to our next one, the moon. So I kind of think of, I'm, I've been trying to figure out the ways to kind of process each of the arcana as they're presented. Um, devil, I kind of think of as like the, you know, the singular source of pain, whereas uh, the wolves, the moon arcana, to me feels... Um, like sort of dealing with this idea of, of like being a lone wolf, of um, diving into these feelings of, um, of isolation, of loneliness, um, and some of the ways that the, uh, you'll see that, uh, I always miss that, I miss that card a lot. Um, but you'll see as we go through this particular stage, which I think is actually one of the, one of the cooler stages in the game, they're all pretty great. Um, You'll see some of the ways that it deals with these these sort of dark, dangerous, foreboding things. <laughs> Broke breakup songs. Woke songs reminiscing about what you had. Bespoke songs about just before it ends. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> gotta gotta love it. It's good to see you, by the way, unknown germ. Welcome back. Um, and I don't think that I don't think the narrative. I don't think the singer is metric. I don't remember her name. Um. Can, uh, Florence, I keep that on my phone just to show people the feels. It's not only my iOS background, but I literally download it on every iOS device I have, just in case there's somebody who I need to, like, explain how games are probably not just what they think they are. Uh, Florence is like my game religion. <laughs> um, or my game evangelism, I guess. I always struggle with that card. There we go. I also have trouble getting the there we go. The hearts here. I was overshooting. But one of the things that I do like about this from a gameplay perspective is that there's no um, there's no content gating based on your score. Shoot. See I should have skipped that last one. But there's no content gating based on your score, so it's not like, oh, you don't see the real ending because you didn't get enough hearts. And so here's our second group. Thank you for posting that, Snacks. Howling Moons. The National Sleep Well Beast is one of my absolute favorite albums and was written by the artist and his wife about their hypothetical separation. I've never heard that before, but I'd definitely love to check it out. So, uh, if we're working from the idea that Howling Moons is, and I, um, and I would love to, to get a chance to talk to the devs about some of their, uh, their sort of like motivations and ideas behind this game. Uh, and and I, I would also totally understand smooching all of all of the characters in this. Um, but if we work from Howling Moons as this sort of representation of isolation when dealing uh, dealing with pain, then I think that um, shoot, I always miss mushrooms. Um, Starting off with this, you know, we have this group that we're encountering in a quiet, silent forest, and then we experience this entire situation of distortion. Um, you know, we can't process time, we can't process distance, um, you know, as we're like bouncing on these different mushrooms and whatnot, having this al almost like um, psychotropic experience. Um, we, you know, the the entire idea of, of processing anything outside of this forest, um, you can't when you are are stuck so incredibly deeply in this, you know, these feelings of isolation and loneliness. But what also gets me is that, um, so, like, yes, the the themes are dark and heavy, but even as we're processing sort of information about heartbreak and. Um, uh, I don't want to die. Okay, there we go. Uh, but even as we're processing all of these sort of like dark, heavy, emotional themes about heartbreak, uh, the music is still surprising, is like still pop music. It's still uplifting and energetic. And 
I think that there's something to be to that thematically of saying like, okay, even though, um, you know, even though we're processing these these dark, difficult themes, uh, there's still uh, an energy that you know, a, a sort of life uh, liveliness that comes through as well. And though, um, and and I think it, it's nice because it provides this sort of like range of experiences, this range of feelings that you have when you're going through heartbreak. So now we get into this part that feels like super dark and dangerous and foreboding. And we're like chasing down, uh, you know, just chasing down this sort of like enemy or something. And that it's also, you know, that we're like chasing down these these wolves that are running in packs. Shoot, I always hit that tree. I don't know what it is about that tree that I <laughs> just struggle with. I also think it's interesting that we have, uh, shoot, I definitely read that uh, opposite. I was like, oh, let me go in front of this giant laser that's about to shoot. I should probably stay out of the way of the laser. There we go. But I kind of like the idea that um, in this stage we're like not running away from the isolation we're not running away from the wolves or running towards them you know because we are the hero instead of getting stuck in any of these particular situations we're moving towards the sources of our you know we're moving towards the sources of pain we're confronting emotionally the situations we're going through which gives us the ability to make those situations better. Yeah, I do want the wolf bite. <laughs> also, um, I'm gonna be real heartbroken. I'm gonna be real disappointed if I don't see some like fantastic Sayonara Wild Hearts cosplay uh, this coming year. Because the costume design in this is just phenomenal. Oof. I always get a little greedy there. If you get real close to uh, death, they give you extra points. Uh, since the points don't matter on this stream, I really should not be uh, taking those risks. No less. Ugh. Shoot. Oh, hey, what's going on, Joe? It's good to see you. Welcome to the stream. I'm feeling okay. Um, I'm trying not to... Uh, uh, I've still got that chest cold, but it has progressed now up into my head. So um, I haven't been coughing a lot and can still feel like I'll be all right over the course of stream. So, uh, What person doesn't process music heartbreak with pop music? Yo, I actually... Yeah, I, I think that's part of what... Um, it's sort of part of the appeal of pop music, right? Is that it, it's supposed to apply to it, it in an, uh, not a it, it applies to the common denominator in all of this. So oh, this this stage is fantastic. Um, and I love the music here. Though I do feel like it's the um, it's the vocal tracks that really stand out for me in uh, Sinar Wild Hearts. I just love this one. to not get crushed. There we go. All right, so now we're about to enter the... Oh, 
Oops. I forgot that there was more level here. Uh, you're like, are you interested in continuing with the game, or you just wanna, you just wanna talk? There we go. There we go. So now we're gonna enter the Lovers Arcana. So, uh, there are some places where I, like I said, I feel like I need to do like maybe some research or kind of a deep dive to figure out um, how I feel about different stuff. This one takes place in Twilight Cry Sky, and this is one of the coolest designed stages, um, even though it can offer, I think, a little bit of struggle when you're coming in. Um, the Lover's Arcana, uh, well, we'll see him in just a bit. Um, and I will also say that one of the things that, um, it's, oh, dang it, you see, I tried to go for the card and didn't commit, there we go, shoot, anyway, um, one of the things that is a difficulty about this game is that there are there are some places where, like, you're only going to be able to maximize your score through memorization. You just can't sight read. But the cool thing about this particular stage is that... The interesting thing about, um, the fact with, uh, that the Tower of the Lovers kind of threw me since they're both major arcana. So do you typically in a tarot reading, it's a combination of major and minor arcana, correct? Um, so the interest, and there actually, there's an actual physical deck of, uh, of major arcana tarot cards that um, is Sayonara Wild Hearts themed. I'll show you the, um, but, oh my gosh, this stage and its design of these sort of alternating matching stages is just like beautiful to me and i think that it's because this um you know the idea of uh, of course trying to like wrap your head around these different areas existing simultaneously um again i think ties into this sort of like theme, this theme of the lovers arcana right that there's a space that each um, there's a space that essentially each lover hosts and lives in individually, but there's also a separate a separate space that basically exists because the two of them are together. And again, this is also something that you know, comes as a result of relationships. that you have this sort of um, you have you know the the world that you each inhabit individually uh, but then when you come together there's a uh, there's like a, a special bond that is created um, and a, a sort of a, a completely different space there's even a um, there have been studies about sort of memory and how memory is changed just sort of on, by the nature of like what we hear about a particular scenario from people that we, uh, you know, trust or care about. Also, this song is fantastic. See, I, I gotta, okay, just commit to staying alive, Josh. The purpose of this is to immerse people in the music, and the immersion goes down when you die. <laughs> you 
Now, I will say that this game is, I'm playing it on Switch, but it's also available on PS4, and it's actually available on iOS as well, so um, if you have Apple Arcade uh, for that five bucks a month, you can play this. But I do recommend that if you're going to play this on mobile, um, that you pick up like a PlayStation controller or something that you can pair with it, because um, I think the touch controls are just really difficult to utilize. But if your only option is to use touch controls or not play it at all, use the touch controls <laughs> and play it with headphones. Now, I think one of the interesting things about the Stereo Lovers Arcana is that um, as we're going through that level, like when it first starts off, we see, um, sorry, we're going to take just a second for this one. So when we start off in the in Stereo Lovers, you saw that the, we, the reason we got a sword was because it was given to us by the Stereo Lovers, by the rival, right? So we saw... Um, originally when we started that phrase, that, that section, we saw, um, we saw the Stereo Lovers as a single unit. And then as we went into that conflict that we, and we were armed with a sword that came from that opponent, right? So it's like, we're looking at this representation of our, um, of our relationship. And the only reason that we even are engaged in this conflict is because of that relationship. But as we go through this battle, um, when we eventually do finally strike uh, that sense of the relationship uh, of the stereo lovers, we find that they're actually two different people who've come together to create a third space. And so we see that in the um, in the scene where we're jumping from, uh, you know, left to right with the snaps, which is, again, I think an absolutely amazing stage but we're seeing worlds that are represented by two people who are both in this same relationship and we see at one point that every time they come together it creates a third space so these spaces are like relatively similar but they hold critical differences and that's again the ways that we interact in relationships that even if I go with my significant other to the same movie, we can walk away from the same movie and that same experience feeling two different things inspired by the same source material. Um, there's a, a there's something special about that third space that's created, but um, but in this case, uh, it is a it is a consistent space of conflict. And so as we go through and essentially push our way. Um, to the end of that segment, we find that uh, the only way that we can the only way that we can defeat that area is to properly understand the differences between those three spaces, the spaces that we each create individually as well as the one that we create together and be willing to push through that experience to see what comes next. Um, <laughs> that went from zero to anime pretty quick. Well, I mean, it starts with a magical girl, a magical girl transformation. So, you know, we know it's gonna go there. Um, that's the thing about this game I find so interesting. I love the concept of the game down to the aesthetic and music, but I have no uh, desire to actually play it. The storytelling aesthetic uh, aspects are fantastic. So watching others play it is wonderful, though. Yeah, I think that it, you know, it is. I'm, I'm very thankful that there are. Um, that streaming exists so that there is a way for people to to experience this game in whatever way works best for them like i enjoy playing the game and i feel like there's a sort of attachment to the material that i get as i'm playing the game i listen to the soundtrack multiple times a week and yet there was something about playing that begin again stage that like i was about to cry on stream uh because there's something about to me, it feels like, though I don't play an instrument, it would be the difference between, um, it's the difference between performing a, a piece of music and listening to that piece of music. They're both the same thing, but there's something that, to me, um, resonates differently when I'm when I'm at the controller, and that's what makes uh, taking the time to be able to play the game so important for me. Um, 
But yeah, um, watching someone else play a game is not only a valid way, uh, a, a valid way to experience game media, but it's one that we should encourage too. Um, I know that particularly in Japan, there are a lot of like AAA devs and whatnot who are like, well, we don't want people to stream this game because spoilers and because then they won't buy the game. But like, there's an entire world of people out there for whom either uh, they may not want to play through a particular game or they may not like, or it's less about what you may not want to do and more about what you are doing. What we are doing by playing this game together instead of having each of us play this game individually is that we get a chance to share an experience and learn from each other. I always feel kind of, it's frustrating a little bit to have this sort of asymmetrical sharing experience because I'm the only one with a voice, right? Like everybody else can, um, uh, can chat, right? So everybody has access to the platform, but it's, but it is, we're all able to communally enjoy a singular experience. And that is different than each of us playing a game individually. So, um, I think that that is... I, I, yeah, you're right. The streamer would believe that streaming is a valid way to experience a game. I am very intelligent. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I but I do think that like, yeah, like Atlas, um, and I think actually even Square Enix and Dragon Quest XI, uh, I think has some sort of streaming something disclaimer, but, um, but I think that there's a validity and importance to the communities that we create while, um, while streaming. So yeah, maybe I'm a little... I'm a little biased, but that's why I, that's why I stream. So, um. all right, let's let's hop back into it and see uh, what our next area is. All right, we're in Heartbreak Subspace, heading through the Hermit Warpway. Uh, so, where the wolves, um, where the I always ah I always struggle with this one. Part of what's interesting about this game is that I feel like you do have to just get a general mastery of it. it to me, playing through this game and getting a good score is like playing music. Uh, you just eventually kind of have to memorize what's coming up in what particular places. Otherwise, you, you just cannot maximize your score. Which, I, you know, I mean, I, I could be reading a little, I could be reading a little deep into it to be like, yep, this is, you know, a music game that's like performing music and that in order to do it well, you have to practice it. But it is very much how I feel about it. And after, when I was playing this like multiple times a week and could go through and like nab a, a stage like that and get a, like a gold rank, it felt really good kind of like being able to now given i'm i'm not a great inch uh not a great musician but like you know getting a guitar and like when you're finally strumming stuff together and chords and it feels like music um, anyway um the hermit area is really interesting because you see that, like, instead of us being on the bike, which is our usually what we're able to use to sort of, like, get aggressive, right? Um, instead, now we're in this car, which has a cool drifting mechanic for bonus points, but... Um, yeah. uh, which is kind of neat, but instead of uh, having our traditional, like, motorcycle section, we're now in this sort of large, empty highway. Uh, driving a car, which is, I think, um, also, I, I would have to, I, I know that um, Samogo is, I believe, their developers out of the Netherlands, but um, to me, this feels like a very, um, and it's, oh, shoot, uh, this, it's probably because I haven't traveled a whole lot outside of the States, but to me, this feels very sort of like, um, Route 66, a um, classic American route trip, right? Like, we're looking at, um, we're using this, like, gigantic old-school car barreling down empty highways, and I think that there's something about sort of the mythos of the American road trip and self-discovery that this level is meant to channel. Um, and we're, 
going through this to essentially dig into um, Hermit 64 is uh, is a really interesting level, but this is all um, the most the most isolation that we experience throughout the game. And you'll see that even um, the Arcana that we're encountering right now is wearing a VR headset. Um, so, you know, and uh, we're not a, you know, we're not our own individual person. We are just a, a program uh, that is experiencing a world um, as conveyed through uh, through this rival Arcana. Now, one of the uh, one of the neat things about this uh, particular stage that you'll see is that uh, this is where we're going to get the most video game references. This is going to be the closest that the game gets to, you know, self self referential or not self referential uh, genre referential um, information. So, um, yeah, try and you know look and see if there are uh, various games that you recognize as we go through this stage. Uh, off Atlas. Performance is mostly about practicing with purpose, in my experience. I, I, I think so. Um, and honestly, that's kind of how I feel playing this game multiple times. Like, there's no, um, there's not really a, with the exception of getting access to the, um, with the exception of getting access to the, um, come on, Josh, use your words. Shoot. I thought that was going to switch one more time. Um, with the exception of getting access to, like, the album mode and whatnot, there's not really an incentive to, like, go through the game uh, a bunch of times. But I do feel like when I'm going through it, um, I'm learning how to better navigate this space and... The more fluidly that I can, it's kind of like playing Rock Band, right? The more fluidly that you can um, go through and like hit all the buttons, the better the music sounds, even though you're not changing the music. Um, which reminds me, I really need to play some drop mix soon. Um, let's see, it's a single player racing game that has a wild aesthetic and requires a control acumen that would be expected out of Super Meat Boy. Um, which game was that? I'm sorry, I missed it earlier. This is the one time that the um, the narrative and the song gets legitimately like slow and probably the closest that it gets to depressing. And it's interesting that that comes in this space where we are dealing with sort of the most isolation and also, uh, you know video games and digital technology, right? Like, we can see in the midst of all of this that we're still interacting with the, um, you know, inside the world of this VR headset. Oh, greed. God, and the vocal range in this level is so great. I think one of the other things that's really significant about this stage is that um, where the rest of the game feels very rhythmic, uh, you know, it feels like it, it, the, the motions are very tied to um, being in the right place at the right time and sinking into the music. Uh, here, the motions are really disconnected. It's really just about getting through this however you can you know um it's you know the movements are kind of jerky and um it feels like a really big break we'll go back to those lyrics afterwards because this is that i think is also really important
I usually die there. So we we cleared Hermit 64, and um, there there are a couple lyrics in there that I think are really important. So over the course of the uh, narratively, we've gone through this process where we feel like we're making our way back. You know, we're we're making our way up. Begin again is really upbeat. Um, dealing with uh, the the soundtrack and stereo lovers is uh is also very upbeat kind of confrontational even right like we have the sense that like yeah i'm getting this i'm figuring this out i'm gonna move on i'm gonna be better i'm gonna get better i'm gonna go to the gym i'm gonna show them that like i you know i'm gonna show them what they're missing out on i'm gonna you know whatever and then we hit this moment of like deep introspection because um there's always that something in the process of trying to um, come back from that heartbreak that just it you know it's driving by that restaurant you went to together it's digging through your jacket pocket and finding a ticket to a show you went to it's um playing a game or just hearing somebody say a word that reminds you of a way that she said a word like <laughs> something dumb that just like knocks you on your ass and um and and i think that there are those moments that you just like uh you get stuck and you get real deep and where it's um i i feel like i i want to do a little bit more thematic study but there are some times where i you know i i have felt like i'm just a i'm just a part of somebody else's game you know uh that i would love to have control here but i don't and the only way that i can i can figure out how to get through this is to um is it's just to to figure out how no matter how messy it is it's not rhythmic it's not pretty it's not whatever um and you know there are these references to sort of like older game aesthetics right because we're using these like vector style graphics like um you know these uh, straight lines and uh, like uh, in the game Tempest or like the old uh, Star Wars games so uh, it's not it's not clean it's not great uh, we lose the the color the vibrancy that we have throughout the rest of the game and we're stuck in this moment of of just sort of like darkness and static uh, but just because we're in that darkness doesn't mean that we cannot push forward and so we're still able to find a way to get through it at the end and that is really critical and um let's see and being alone makes you destroy everything around you very subtle well but i i think that uh you know joe says like you're literally dodging destructive forces in your own head to reach those bits of love after meandering through minefields that's beautiful joe i think that um i don't think i have anything to add to that i think yeah that feels really spot on thank you for that let's check out the next stage all right so new heartbreak subspace this one is the ocean of death so uh the arcana that we're going up uh we're starting with here is the star the star is actually going to provide us our ship with which we're able to navigate the ocean of death. Um, this is, uh, again, this is another part of sort of the tonal change that we're experiencing, um, or that we experienced going into this last stage in Hermit 64. Um, because now we're dealing with this sort of, instead of being in a, uh, you know, being in a car on a uh, on a motorcycle where we get to control what you know what happens, we now are on a boat where we don't really have any option but to figure out how we can get close to where we want to, but also have to deal with the ocean, the waves. Uh, we have to find some way to. We have to find some way to to sort of like cooperate 
with the with the the system that's in front of us. Um, to me, sailing always seems like it would be an amazing experience, but also kind of terrifying because, like, what happens when the waves get huge? What happens when um, you know the wind isn't blowing the way you want it to? So uh, the next Arcana that we're going to be dealing with is uh, shoot. It's on the wrong side. But uh, this is the the Death Arcana. This is the head of the whole nine. I think we're getting through this a lot faster than I thought we would. We might be actually done on time, even with me doing all this talking. Of course, now that I've said that, watch me uh, screw up a bunch in the uh, pretty nail on the head uh, named Love Dead City. But we do have our bike back, so we do have our elements of control. So notice that like we are navigating city streets like with stereo lovers, but instead of instead of it being this like brightly lit, uh, you know, brightly lit kind of like sunset world, this one is super dangerous. It's uh, you know the sides of the roads are electrified. Um, we're driving in the rain. It's dark. Now, I don't know enough about the tarot to know what the reference is to bringing up the Hanged Man. Um, we are dealing with little death here, so um, I do think I, it is possible that one reading of this is, um, you know, that dealing with little death and the Hanged Man is possibly the contemplation of of self-harm, um, and I don't mean to dive too deep into that theme, particularly without giving people a heads up that that was part of the that might be part of the discussion. But we are using the uh, the card of temperaments to be able to to fight back against um, against these these you know demons, these represent these small representations of death. And this is all just like one big kind of like shooting gallery. And I also feel like this is kind of referential to um, if you've played Res before, uh, it's that same sort of like massive targeting style of, uh, of tracing an attack, except thankfully in this case, you don't actually have to like press the button. To... There's no timing mechanic there anyway. Um... The Hanged Man is the card of ultimate surrender, of being suspended in time, and of martyrdom and sacrifice to the greater good. I don't necessarily think that that is uh, maybe too far off base than that, that interpretation, particularly when, you know, thinking about it in... Um, when thinking about it in terms of this sort of, like, processing of relationships. And it doesn't necessarily even have to be um, physical self-harm, but just that, that feeling of, uh, and that sense of giving up. Uh, whether it's like, alright, forget, like, I'm just gonna, you know, stay in my room, not take care of myself or anything, like... But I feel like this song is actually a really, really strong opportunity to see, uh, uh, that sort of like positive progress because as you listen to the lyrics of this particular track um, it kind of talks about like 
trying to negotiate through the relationship or, or through the problems of the relationship and eventually coming to the conclusion that like maybe we're just not gonna find it ah oh, shoot i always think that the, i'm supposed to press a for that but i'm actually supposed to dodge there we go And this also starts with that uh, that same kind of concept of like the first uh, lyrics. I think uh, you know how long have we been talking? So it's that same like okay, we've been trying to figure this out forever. I also appreciate that, like, unlike every other situation where our punches have been, like, one, like, one knockout punch, this one instead is, like, no, this is a three count doing really serious damage, but it's also not over. Um, I don't necessarily have a great interpretation for, like, riding on the massive, like, stream of vomit, but, like, <laughs> um... I'll figure one out. It's me putting my degree to work. You can see, even actually this stage, even after we've gone through it, there's still more to do. I always forget about that one. Ugh. I know all the major arcana is because I've played too much Binding of Isaac. <laughs> but yeah, that idea that conquering death is never as simple as you want it to be. Or it could be hell or stages of grief. It, I've, it's one of the things that I do appreciate about the narratives and themes in this game is that there are a lot of ways to interpret it. When I first played through it, I really felt like um, a lot of it was about dealing with death. Um, I think that the music and the lyrics um, speak pretty strongly to um to romantic relationships but i think that there are i think that you can apply so many of these themes they're kind of like universal to dealing with loss you know like dealing with with pain and loss however uh however you happen to be dealing with it uh, i am not gonna figure this out here we go And here we've got, you know, this is sort of the, uh, you know, the final boss fight, the culmination of all of these different forces that we've pushed against, now getting exceptionally antagonistic, right? Now they're, um, and we still have to figure out how to push forward, even though we've got these, uh, these forces that are now trying to stop us and in a full combination of, of all power. me say it. I knew it was a problem when I did it.
But it's interesting because I also think that there is sort of a, a heartbreak interpretation to this as well, which is that like when you're first dealing with heartbreak, with loss, it's completely mystifying and you stumble and screw up and you get stuck in places that are so incredibly frustrating, right? Um, and even after you're familiar, it's not, it's not like the challenge of figuring out how to recover from heartbreak or grief goes away, but it does become easier. Like, I legitimately thought we were going to be spending, you know, two hours getting through this game. But I guess I also kind of forgot that, like, I've got some of these mechanics down already. And now we've gone through, we've, we've fought all of these arcana, and now we've actually, like, we're encountering this not as our masked, transformed self, but instead as our real self. Um, and this song is such a great way to, uh, to kind of wrap up the entire experience. So instead of instead of now punching our uh, our enemies to death, uh, instead of in, engaging in this direct combat, we we've, we've become like we figured out how to actually interact with these situations, and no, we just it's a self it's an acceptance. I mean, there, it's like we don't even use the sword. We have the longboard. The longboard is ours. You don't have to give us the longboard. We bring it. just think that there's so much to those lyrics. We're just changing our shape like butterflies. It's not, this is, you know, this is all that there is. This is our goodbye. But it's, it's not death. It's moving forward. It's moving on. It's transforming into something completely different. Now we're kind of back where we started, right? This is the same sort of astral pathway that set us on our journey in the first place. And now we have to return home. Ugh. I always like being able to actually nab that. When you're actually able to like get all the hearts there, it just feels very cool. Much like yours, there was a young woman who fell out of love, asleep, away. For years she fell through spirals of sadness and anger until she could not fall any deeper and fell right back 
into her groove. There we go. Yeah, it was Clara de Lune. Uh, yeah. I just, I care so much about this game a <laughs> lot. And I, I think it's such a great way to start 2020. Um, there are, I mean, there's a lot of fights to be had in the coming year. Um, but the sense of being able to, to approach um, and to have the expectation that you can get to the end without going through the journey is unreasonable. To assume that you would have the tools to to go through and, and to kiss all your demons without going through that conflict and that confrontation is probably asking too much, right? The it's not the it's not that you've all of a sudden gained a new tool, right? We've gone through and throughout the game we get all sorts of new tools to be able to handle all of these different um, these different enemies, right? We get motorcycles and swords and boats and all this different stuff, but what we end up needing are, are in reality, to come back and to deal with these things, oh, we need love and acceptance, and we have to be able to confront the forces that want to do us damage with compassion. think that's going to be a real big part of 2020 and so we're going to have to get a whole lot of stuff done but i think that part of getting that done is going to ha is going to be trying to find ways to confront fear and adversity with love and understanding that it's a process to figure out how to how to come to that conclusion how to find that um, to channel that energy within yourself, but um, I think it's I th I th again. I think that there's a lot of power in this game um, for all the right reasons, and I am so incredibly glad that it uh, not only that it exists, but that um, we have it at the time that we do. Um, I feel kind of similar. I feel similarly about um, Into the Spider Verse. I think it was a movie at a perfect time about a um, about what it means to come together um, as a bunch of different people who have the potential to take on adversity um, and figure out not only um, how to find that strength inside yourself um, for whatever your specific like powers and skills are, but also how to realize how that fits into a broader context of working with others to tackle situations that are larger than what you could handle individually. Whether it's um, as Miles, where he has to realize what power he actually does have within himself and find the, the strength to step up. Or whether it's Peter B, who has to realize that his goal or his role now is to be a mentor and to learn how to pass off responsibility to somebody who can who can wear that mental or I'm sorry that mantle. Um, whether it's Gwen, who has to realize that there are are is a power and strength in friendship, and that letting people in gives her more of an opportunity to be able to do justice in the world. Um, there. There's a lot of trash media out there, and I get it, but like, focus on the good media. Like, that's what, that, 2020, vision clear. Like, focus on the good media. Take in, take in what you need to strengthen your resolve, to like, make the world a better place. That's, that's my goal, that's my focus, that is my purpose for 2020. Um, there's way too, there are so many people out here doing so many amazing things. And I think that looking 
at the world, understanding that the world is is on a tipping point, but just looking at it as this world that is has no potential for restoration um, is to miss so much of what still makes this world beautiful and what should give us hope for making 2021 and 2022 and 2024 and 2044 um, as good as they can be. So, yeah, that's... Yeah. I don't know. That's... That's how I feel when I play this game. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I think that's that's pretty well going to do us for, for stream. Aw, <laughs> Anna, you're too kind. Um, and Joe, yeah, you do need to watch Spider-Verse. Like, it's on Netflix. You can, you can watch it on Netflix, Joe. You don't even have to rent it anymore. You can just open up Netflix. Anna also needs to watch it. And I kind of watched it, but was also not was working. Yeah, yeah. We need to we need to find a time. Yeah. <laughs> a uh, A B W S. Always be watching Spider Verse. <laughs> like, oh, uh, gosh. Yeah, the whole soundtrack, the the whole effing soundtrack is fantastic. Even the Post Malone song. And I don't really like Post Malone, but even that song, that Sunflower song, is is real catchy. Except for the part where uh, she says that the the girl was a was a bad bad. Like, no, I don't I don't approve. Also, she wanna what was it? She want uh, she wanna ride me like a cruise, and I'm not trying to lose. Like, what does what does that trash lyric? Best lyrics, worst lyrics, Anna. Fight me. Like, I want to. She want to ride me like a cruise? No. No. <laughs> like, oh. Sheesh. She want to ride me like a cruise, and I'm not trying to lose. Like, did you just run out of opportunity? Was there nothing? For no other words, and like a cruise, so all inclusive. <laughs> she went right like a cruise, destroying the environment in tons of ways that we didn't even know. Um, cruises have so much alcohol, yeah, and irris potentially irresponsible out in waters where government can't get involved. Like, uh, tell me, what does that mean? What does ride like a cruise mean? Um, <laughs> she wants to pay a lot of money cooped up on a weird boat. Also, hot tubs. Hot tubs exist outside of cru- I'm, my voice is- I didn't realize- I guess I am- I'm still- I'm getting better, but I can- I can feel that sore throat coming back. Have you- have you ever played shuffle- and- okay, you know what? No. Uh, no. It's fine. I've never actually played shuffleboard. I would, I would, I would try that. Okay, folks, um, it's eight o'clock. That's, I'm surprised. We're basically right on time. So, um, yeah, thank you for hanging out, folks. Thank you for for watching our first stream of the new year. Um, I also want to uh, remind you, folks, our podcast is coming back. The podcast, the Intelligame Podcast. Next, uh, first episode. Uh, of the new season is uh, Aaron Monday. Monday, January 6th. Is it the 6th? I think it's the 6th. Um, so please, um, add, add it to your podcatcher. Tell other people. I, I, I want 2020 to be a big year for IntelliGame. Um, and we're going to do some really cool things. We're going to create some great content. We're going to have, we're going to share some fantastic games. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you for spending time here. Uh, Anna, are you are, are you up tonight or are you um, you just hanging out? I saw your post earlier. I hope you're feeling okay. Uh, but if you're going to go live, uh, then you should go live and I'll host you or I'll, we, we can raid you. If you are not, 
then I will find uh, I will find somebody. Who is alive? Let's head over to... I think we're gonna head over to... Uh, we're gonna head over to Sheratomo, actually. Uh, Sheratomo is actually also a friend of Anna's. Um, I met her when she uh, did a panel uh, that Anna hosted for Oricon this year. Um, she's a really awesome person. She is playing some Dragon Quest XI. This is her first Dragon Quest. I actually stopped in her stream a little bit um, before I was uh, before I went live. So uh, please, uh, when we get over there, use that hashtag in Telerade um, and give her some uh, give her some support. And she definitely deserves your follows. She's a phenomenal streamer. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. This was really cool. Uh, we will see you next time. Until then, keep Intelligaming.